In this video, I want to look at the argument from fallacy, sometimes called the fallacy fallacy. This fallacy occurs when an individual reasons that because an argument contains a fallacy, it follows that the conclusion of that argument is or must be false. This line of reasoning, though, is incorrect. Just because an individual reasons poorly to a conclusion doesn't make that conclusion false. In other words, people can reason poorly to all sorts of true statements. And this is because the truth or falsity of a statement or a conclusion is independent of the bad reasoning an individual puts forward. It stands based upon what it says and what the facts are. More concretely, you can imagine an individual reasoning to the proposition that snow is white or two plus two equals four, and they just reason to it in a horrible way. They just got lucky. So just because they reason incorrectly to the conclusion doesn't make the conclusion false. It just makes their argument for that conclusion a bad one. If you're not convinced by this, you can imagine two individuals reasoning to a conclusion. One individual reasons poorly to the conclusion, and so given the argument from fallacy, you'd say that the conclusion is false, and the other individual reasons correctly or masterfully to the conclusion, and so we would say that the conclusion is true provided they you know, reason from true propositions. So we'd have the same proposition, two plus two equals four, and with one individual we'd say that that proposition is false, and with the other individual we would say it is true. But this doesn't make any sense. The, a proposition can't be both true and false, and especially with a proposition by like two plus two equals four, where we already know the truth value to it, we certainly wouldn't say that that individual's poor reasoning makes that proposition false. The form of this argument is as follows. We have an argument, that argument has a conclusion, and that argument commits a fallacy. So this would be the first premise, identifying an argument pointing out what its conclusion is, and noting that that argument is fallacious. Then we would reason to the conclusion that the conclusion of that fallacious argument is false. But this argument is invalid. The premise can be true and the conclusion can be false. That is, we can have fallacious arguments with true conclusions. We can make this argument valid by adding a missing premise. So go ahead and pause the video and see what premise would we need to add in order to make this argument valid. That is, would make that if the premises were true, the conclusion also would be true. Welcome back. And so the premise you would need to add in order to make the argument valid is that every fallacious argument has a false conclusion but this particular premise would be demonstrably false. There are plenty of fallacious arguments that have true conclusions. So let's look at some examples. The first example, you can imagine an individual who reasons as follows. Everyone believes snow is white, therefore snow is white. And our response to this argument might be, this argument is fallacious. Just because everyone believes something to be the case doesn't make it the case. So this would be, we've identified what's called the appealing to popularity fallacy. So next thing that might occur is we might reason that because John's argument has committed this appealing to possibility fallacy, we would reason to the conclusion that snow is not white. That is, we would reason to the conclusion that John's conclusion is false. And if we were to do this, we would commit the argument from fallacy or the fallacy fallacy. So again, the point is that just because John's argument is fallacious doesn't make his conclusion false. Let's look at another example. Let's say John says, I drink water every day, and the reason I do this is because it's traditional. I have a long tradition. My family has a tradition of drinking water every day. Well, again, we might look at John and say to him, well, John, that is a bad reason. You have committed the appealing to tradition fallacy. Just because something's traditional doesn't mean that that tradition should preserve into the future. And so then we might also say, well, you should not continue to drink water. Well, again, here we would have committed the argument from fallacy. Just because John's argument for drinking water every day is fallacious doesn't make his conclusion false. And intuitively we would say, you know, John's conclusion is in fact true. You should drink water every day. Let's look at a third example. A third example would be the appealing to possibility fallacy. Let's say someone reasons, well, you know what? It's possible that two plus two equals four. 
And so they would reason that since it's possible that two plus two equals four, it's the case or actual that two plus two equals four. Well, here we might point out, hey, you've committed the appealing to possibility fallacy. Just because something's possible doesn't make it actual. And given the fact that we pointed out a fallacy that their line of reasoning is fallacious, we might take that further step and say, well, two plus two doesn't equal four. Their conclusion is rooted in a fallacious line of reasoning, and so their conclusion must be false. But if we did this, we would commit the argument from fallacy. One last example. So let's say, oh, I need money, and so I'm praying for money, and I buy a lottery ticket, and I win the lottery, so I have a bunch of money on, on the way. I might reason as follows. Prayer works. Prayer is efficacious. And I would reason that I prayed for something, and then I got that thing. I prayed to win the lottery, and then I won the lottery. Well, someone might respond, hey, you've committed the post hoc ergo propter hoc fallacy. Just because an event happened before another event doesn't mean that that event that happened before the event was the cause of it. So my line of reasoning or my argument for the efficacy of prayer is rooted in a fallacious line of reasoning. Well, someone might take the next step and say, this proves that prayer is not in fact efficacious. Well, if they did this, then they would have committed the argument from fallacy. Just because my line of reasoning is fallacious doesn't make the conclusion false. All right, at this point, I think it's worthwhile to reflect on this a little bit, reflect on this particular fallacy. And so the first reflection I wanna make is, I think this fallacy occurs a uh, pretty frequent and casual conversation. You and someone else are debating a topic, and let's say that other person puts forward an argument for their position, and you show how that position is flawed in some way, that their reasoning for that conclusion is mistaken. All right, and from that you say, well, you know, I showed that like your line of reasoning is terrible, and so you must be wrong. Well, if you did this, then you would have committed the argument from fallacy or the fallacy fallacy. Just because you've pointed out that someone's line of reasoning for a conclusion is flawed doesn't make, make their conclusion false. So my second reflection is more so what you can think about when you show that someone's line of reasoning for a conclusion is flawed. What you can conclude is that their argument isn't any good. They don't have a good reason for that particular conclusion, or they at least haven't stated what that reason is. You don't wanna take the extra step and say, well, since I've shown that your line of reasoning is fallacious, that your conclusion is false, that again would be to commit the argument from fallacy. You can't reason from the fallacy to the falsity of the conclusion. The third reflection is to uh, maybe a sort of tip to guard against ever com committing this fallacy. I think the thing to keep in mind is that the conclusion can be true based upon other lines of reasoning that you haven't considered. So just because some people give bad reasons or arguments for a conclusion doesn't mean that there aren't other powerful reasons or arguments out there. Or that conclusion, even if there isn't a good reason to believe it, just might be by chance true. And so just because you show a line of reasoning is flawed doesn't mean give you the additional warrant to conclude that that conclusion is false. All right, thank you very much for watching the argument from fallacy. If you have an example of this argument from fallacy, I'd love to read it in the comments and I'll see you next time.